Hey friends, my name is Z and you're watching the Miss It Easy. And welcome to a new video for design technology core content. And today we have 1.14, which is challenges that influence the processes of design and making. And by the end of the lesson, you should be able to describe 1.14.1, the respect for different social, ethnic, and economic groups. 1.14.2, uh, which is environmental, social and economic issues and the consideration of green designs and 1.14.3 which is recycling and reusing materials and products and 1.14.4 which is the factors to consider and LCA which is life cycle analysis so check out the pain comment in the comment section for all the timestamps but we'll move on now to 1.14.1 respect for different social, ethnic and economic groups and then here's what type of group should we should like designers consider. The first one is social groups. They share a common social aspect such as education level, age, or gender. And designs should incorporate specific needs and desires. For example, phone design for young people that enable easy access to social media. And ethnic groups. They share a common cultural background such as ancestry, homeland, or sorry, homeland dialect, or cultural heritage. And the products should be sympathetic to their culture and not offend them. For example, the care should be taken while using certain symbols, clothing, or labels. And then we have economic groups. They share similar incomes and may be divided by class. And different economic groups have different purchasing power and may be driven by cost, quality, or brand of the product. For example, kettles ranging from cheap and basic to expensive and sophisticated depending on the technology that it has. Then we have environmental, social, economic issues and consideration. So here we have uh, some uh, issues. The Fairship Foundation, basically they tackle poverty and injustice across the world and it looks after the interests of farmers and producers in developing countries by ensuring them, sorry, by ensuring they are paid a fair price for their goods and it also looks at working conditions and tries to prevent ch uh, child or enforce labor and discrimination by gender. Carbon offsetting schemes, they allow companies or individuals to try to reduce their carbon footprint or become carbon neutral, for example by planting trees, adopting renewable energy resources or encouraging staff to work or cycle to work. And product disassembly, it enables the product to be recycled or the parts reused. It also means that the product can last longer because they can be repaired or upgraded easily. And when designing products, companies could consider reducing the number of parts and examining how parts fit together and labeling the parts by material for easy separation and recycling. And disposal of waste, they are governed by laws at international and European and national and local levels to ensure that the collection, transportation, Recovery and disposal of waste has the least impact on the environment. Then we have the promoting green designs and the consideration. Now you can have these. Designing for energy efficiency in the use of the product. Using more non-toxic recyclable materials or reusable materials and components. Oh, sorry. Using biodegradable materials. Using renewable energy sources or more efficient energy sources. And lastly, reducing waste or using less materials. Then we have 1.14.3, which is recycling and reusing materials and products. So here's the advantage and disadvantage. Advantage should be that less waste material uh, to go to the landfill, and it reduces the demand for new raw materials, and it helps reduce uh, global, uh, global warming caused by emissions from processing raw materials like carbon dioxide. And it can reduce the need for transportation and mining. And jobs can be created in the recycling industry. And money is saved as the materials are used for a second time. So there's quite a lot of advantage. But disadvantage could be that the recycling process can be complex when separating materials. And it's not always cost effective and as a lot of energy is needed to transport, process and reassemble recyclable materials. And the recycling process may produce waste and pollutants creating more environmental problems. And jobs created in the recycling industry may be low quality or like low pay because it requires less skill. And the quality of the recycled materials may be inferior. 
Then lastly, we have 1.14.4, the factors to consider it, uh, to consider and the life cycle analysis, the LCA. So here are the factors to consider first. Number one, human capability. For a design to be successful, it has to meet the needs of the users and operate within their capabilities. For example, if the controls on an electric heater are unclear, there is a risk of accident. Often, simple design changes can improve a product and reduce the amount of accidents. Cost of material Initial cost of raw material and maintenance, transportation, recycling, disposal of material, and uh, it's basically in, it's calculated or included in the cost of the material. And an environmental costs also need to be considered, such as the production of raw material, and the cost to recycle, reuse, or, or dispose of the material. And this cost should be damaged uh, to the landscape, emission from conversion processes, or the amount of energy required in the production process. Then we have manufacturing cap capability. The easier a product it is to construct, the lower the manufacturing cost because it obviously requ requires less uh, workforce. And factors include the materials, required quality and tolerance, required finish, etc. Designers can then design for manufacture or DFM by using standardized parts and reducing parts and reducing the amount of specialized parts, simplifying or, or, or using repeatable processes. Number three, Reducing the complexity of the design or making it modular, which is a design featuring parts of standard sizes, so they can be constructed in a different way. And number four, designing simple, uh, simple quality control tests. Number five, reducing the tolerance in parts where possible. And number six, which is designing for disassembly for serving and repair. Then lastly, we have life cycle analysis for the environmental impact. LCA is a systematic inventory that assesses environmental impacts relating to every stage of a product's life, and it can be easier to identify areas where and what can be changed to reduce cost and environmental impacts. Designers need to calculate the, all the environmental costs of a product from extraction, transportation, processing of raw materials, manufacturer, transportation or distribution, use of products, disposal, and uh, the recovery at the end of its life. And that's it for this 1.14 video for design technology core content. And I hope you guys found it useful and found it helpful. And if you did, please leave a like and subscribe and comment down below if you have any questions or criticisms. And also check out my Instagram in the description for more daily content. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this and I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, stay safe and happy learning.